My name is David. Um, I'm, sit down, okay? Cause I'm not a motivational speaker, okay? But, uh, my name is David. Uh, we have a clothing line called Sleep is for Suckers. For people that's losing sleep, doing what they love. So all of our shirts and hats and you know, wristbands, they have like a work ethic undertone to it. Because I think sleep is a very expensive activity. Like sleep costs you. Um, so in the, in the beginning of starting these, uh, these clothes, you know, it was about not sleeping. Because I work all day at my job and I get off my job and I work on this brand. So I didn't take a day off in like two and a half years because I used to work at a restaurant. So I work on my job, my business, or both every day for like two and a half years until I was able to leave my job. But um, the, the message kind of changed. Now it's not necessarily about sleeping in a bed or you should only get like four or five hours of sleep. Because now I teach kids that um, if you watch TV all day, we consider that sleep. It's not really about the dangers of laying in a bed. If you play video games, we consider that sleep. If you come to a class like this, and all you're trying to do is get a grade, you sleep. Conversely, I teach uh, adults and, uh, and, and, and college students, you might work a job. You might graduate and work a job that you absolutely hate for like 15 years with no progression. You know God's calling you to do something greater, and you don't, you sleep. And sometimes it takes people a little while to wake up. Um, so that's pretty much the basis of our brand. Um, she, she asked me to kind of touch on why I got started. What happened was, anybody ever worked at a restaurant? I worked in one. Oh, where were you at? Um, Taco Mac in Midtown. Taco Mac, where you? Chick-fil-A in Chicago. I worked at the Cheesecake Factory. I was there six years, right? So one day, I'm cutting bread, right? It's, 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 uh, it's around my, um, my birthday time, right? This girl comes up to me. She said, what you doing for your birthday? I said, I don't know. She said, let's go to the same club we went to last year. Um, everybody came out. Everybody had a good time. I said, cool, let's do it. So she walks away. And that conversation changed my life, like forever, that conversation. Because it told me one thing, that for the last 12 months, I've been asleep. Like, it's 12 months later, but I'm about to celebrate my birthday at the same place I celebrated last year. I'm still at the same job I was 12 months ago. Um, my bank balance was about the same. I drove the same car. I lived in the same place. I could have literally got hit by a car, been in a coma, woke up 12 months later, and been in the same position, sleep. Conversation changed my life. So we started this brand, and you know it's 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 been amazing. But to talk about like personal, I mean, uh, public speaking. Uh, are y'all here like because it's like a prerequisite to a mm -hmm. course? I would imagine that these are just regular numbers. Most of the people that take this class is because they have to take the class. And if you didn't have a choice in taking it, you probably wouldn't take it. Would, would, would that be accurate? I'm not saying y'all in this room, but most people that take that course, yeah. this course probably is in that situation. Mm -hmm. I am a public speaker, um, but it's not necessarily so that I can give you know eulogy speeches and, and all that kind of stuff. Communication is probably the single most important thing in anything you do. What we do is we paint pictures with words. And the better you can get at painting a picture with words, the more successful you'll be in anything. Like it carries over to everything. Like it's painting pictures with words. To get somebody to say something and get the person that you're talking to to say, oh, I see what you're saying. Like I, I hear what you're saying, but now I can see it. Like um, who's, who's like the most famous public speaker in history? Like who, who's the best public speaker in history? Condoleezza Rice. Who's the best, the best public speaker ever? Just give me an idea. Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King, he was a good one. I would probably say Jesus, right? Because he will go, everybody got this, right? Now, I'm not here to preach to you guys. But, okay, this isn't going to turn into a sermon. But um, he, he had the, the ability to speak and show people pictures as he talked. Like he, he was speaking like in, in parables. You know what I'm talking about? He'd speak in parables. Because he can say, listen, if you if we stick together, you'll be able to have anything you want. But that's not as effective as saying, I am the vine and you are the branches. If I abide in you, you abide in me. Um, you can produce as much fruit as you want. That's painting a picture. He used an illustration. So, I can say, look, if we stick together, we're going to make it. But you can't see that. You can only hear it. Because he's, he's making a picture. Because everybody can relate to a tree. I'm the vine. You're the branch. 
there's some fruit. If we stick together, um, you can produce fruit, but you know, if you cut off the branch and it's just laying on the ground, it's not gonna produce what? He's painting these pictures with words. And I've gotten very good at painting pictures with words. And it carries over to everything. I have a, pro I have a problem dating. Not, not that I have a problem like finding a date, but it's easy to get into a relationship, but it's hard for me to get out. <laughs> it's the craziest thing. Because what happens is, I've used this skill of like painting pictures. Like if I meet somebody, I'll, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll start talking. And the girl might say something like, what, what's some first conversation stuff? Like, how do you? 21. You know, all important questions like, do you want a family? Do you want kids? Something like that. So a girl might ask me, yo, do you want kids? And I say, kids? Oh, God, I love kids. I love kids. Like, I, and, and I, I, I believe in the, 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 um, the, uh, the institute of family. Like, I, I really want kids because I want to be able to come home and I, I, I'm almost like a hopeless romantic. You come home to the new house and you got two cars in the driveway and you come home, the kids kind of run up to you and I just want that feeling like of coming home, wife's cooking in the kitchen and like she's happy to see me, I'm happy to see her. When I go home now, it's not like that. It's like I go home and there's nobody there but me. But I really, I really want that feeling and it's honest. It's not like a running game or anything like that, but that's what I really want. So when I think of kids, I think of this whole situation and when the woman's talking to me, she sees this picture that I'm painting. All she wants to know is, do I want kids? But I tell her, I, I paint this picture, and all throughout our dating, like she's gathering these pictures that I'm painting. Uh, Yo, I need a vacation. Oh, you need one too? Oh my God, I went out to Destin, Florida. The water was this high, but I can look down and still see my feet. The, the water was beautiful. Like, and if you go around five, six o'clock, the, the sun's coming down. It's like, it's hard to explain. It's like an orange, reddish, yellow, but it's like a piece. You'd have to see it but she can almost see it through my words. So once I'm in this situation, if it doesn't work out, I'm, can I keep it real? I, I know y'all here coming here to uh, <laughs> hear about my love life, but um, if it doesn't work out just the way I, I think it should, I'm okay with leaving, but there's, they, they just don't want to, they don't want to leave because they have all these pictures in their head. So I, I, I mean, it's, it's not a skill that I'm trying to acquire. And, all right, let me clear that up. It's not that I'm running game. Like, it's just how I feel at the time and the way I talk. I Like, that's just how I talk. You know what I'm saying? So, if you're coming to this class uh, uh, to get a grade, you're losing. Like, I wish there was a public speaking course because it carries over to everything. And I've been doing this. I've never took a course or anything, but I've just always been good at communication. So, it's not about speaking to a whole class or a whole doing seminars and all that kind of stuff. But it's just certain skills that you guys are picking up right now, like that are so valuable. Oh my gosh! I, as as a kid, if you ask my brother, he would probably say that our parents loved me more than they loved him. He would probably say that because growing up, he got way more beats than I did. Like he just, but he's not he's not he's not like the best communicator. I've always been a good communicator, like. I knew how to, um, if, if, if I got suspended, I got suspended one time. And I knew when I got home, I'd have better had a good story while I got suspended. I was fighting. If my brother gets suspended for fighting, he's going to come home and be like, yo, the dude, he said this and I said that and I had to hit him, right? But I've always been good at painting pictures, even for my parents. So I remember I was. I got suspended, I came home, my dad's like, yo, you're in trouble, go to your room right now. So he comes in to my room and he has his belt. And I'm like, whoa, dad, hey, calm down. First off, like, it wasn't my fault. And that, was, that would be where my brother would have left it. It wasn't my fault, I didn't do it. He's like, yo, he made me fight him. How did he make you fight him? You know what I'm saying? So I said, dad, hold on. I remember the story like it was yesterday. I said, dad, listen. I, I, I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. So I'm detailing the story. I'm talking to my friend, and my friend says something to the guy, and the guy, his name is Michael, Michael Levinson, I'll never forget it. He says, yo, what you say? And he was looking at me, and I ignored him. I was like, well, he ain't talking to me because I ain't seen nothing to him. He comes around the table, this is sixth grade, he comes around the table, he says, yo, yo, it's crazy, I remember it so vividly. 
Don't tell my dad the story. I say he comes around the table. He's like, "What you say?" And I stood up, Dad, because it, I, I, I want to protect myself. I don't want him to just hit me while I'm sitting down. So I stood up and I said, "I didn't say anything to you." He said, "Yo, well, why was y'all laughing?" And he pushed me. I said, "Dad, he pushed me." And so I smacked his hand away. It wasn't that I was trying to fight him back. I was just wanted to get his hand off me. When I smacked his hand, he punched me, Dad. So we started fighting. And I'm, I, I'm helpless in this situation. All my friends are laughing at me. My dad says, well, if, if, you're gonna get, if you're gonna get in trouble, you should wipe the floor with him. That's what he said, that's how my dad talked. He said, you should just wipe the floor with him if he won't hit you. And I said, that's what I'm saying, but I didn't wanna get in trouble. He says, you know what? <laughs> All right, walks away. I was suspended, it was like three days off. I, I wasn't on punishment, I, had, you know I, mean? I could watch TV, I can go outside, all that. But I was good at painting these pictures. Now I'm not sure, if the story I told him was what actually happened, but I paid that picture for him. But I'm telling you, this public speaking is not, it's not about what you think it's about. Like communication, that's why I'll never, ever be homeless. Because I know I can go into a job. If everything goes wrong, people stop filling my clothes and all that kind of stuff, I know I can get a job because I know how to talk to people. I can paint a picture. Anybody want to start clothing on? Anybody into fashion? T-shirt company? Everybody's doing it to us. It's a good, it's a good lucrative business. I went and, if you start to study people, you'll become a better speaker. I study people like almost like I'm trying to get a grade. Like this is, it's just like independent study for me. I study people and I understand, there's a book called um, uh, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. There's a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. In a room this size, I can almost guess one or two people are going to write that down. It's just the numbers. 5% of people make over $100,000 a year. 95% of people couldn't care less. Um, but I'm telling you, this book changed my life. How to win friends and influence people. Just learning about people. So I started this clothing line, fast forward, and I'm almost done, I promise. Um, I know I got two to three minutes. <laughs> but um, I, I, I go into the store. I'm like, yo, I, I want the store to carry my clothes. I, I want the store to carry my brand. And just through this kind of personal development thing, just kind of learning who people are and you know, painting these pictures for people, I go into the store with some clothes and I say, hey, I want you to carry my brand. He already has a thousand brands in the store. Like, why does he need another one? So I said, I want you to carry my brand. He said, well, eh, they look okay, but you know, we're not interested right now. I said, well, we can do consignment where you know, I'll just put it in your store and you can just give me some money based off the sales of them. And I said, well, um, just putting myself in a store owner's standpoint, uh, just putting myself in his shoes, I said, well, this is what I'm going to do. If we put these clothes in your store, my goal is to make sure that you sell out of these clothes because I want you to buy the clothes from me and then sell them yourself. But the only way you're going to start buying clothes from me and selling them yourself is if I put these 20 shirts in here and they sell out. If they sell out, I got you forever. You'll continue to buy from me. So I'm going to promote your store. I'm going to tell people, these shirts are in this store. You need to go to this store and buy these clothes. So I'm going to be promoting to my entire following to go to your store and buy clothes. Now, sometimes they might go to your store and not buy my clothes, but they'll be in your store. There's nobody else that's going to have a clothing line that's going to promote your store. I want to drive traffic to your store. So from a business owner standpoint, he's like, well, this is free marketing. It doesn't cost me anything. I don't have to buy the shirts. Let's do it. And that was a spark. Every store I went to with that pitch, they took it. Why wouldn't they? Well, most people think of it themselves and, hey, carry my clothes. And they say, no, you try to go to another store and leave it right there. Now you gotta paint these pictures. He's paint, he's, he's, he has this picture in his head of me driving traffic to a store for free, free advertisement. It doesn't cost him a dime. So when you're talking to these people and in these public, public speaking situations, you gotta know your audience. Fair enough? Um, that's pretty much all I got. I don't got a lot of time left. Do you have any questions? Do you have some questions? What you got? So that's how you started your business, basically? Just going into different stories and promoting yourself like that? Um, well, I started it like with these uh, Sleepers for Suckers wristbands. Mm -hmm. And I, I really, um, it wasn't really about the band. Right, it was more of relating to people, like you know, explaining 
you know, a lifestyle to people. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's so funny. Every so often, these wristbands are $2 on my website. Shipping overseas is $25. Like, the minimum is $25. Every so often, somebody will go on my website and buy two wristbands from, like, Nova Scotia or, you know what I mean, like, somewhere weird, right? So they'll pay $27, $29 for two wristbands, not because it's any special silicone. These things cost me $0.33 cent to make. But they'll spend $30 on it because of what it means, because we're painting a picture. This is you. I have a shirt that says, um... Uh, it says work like slaves, eat like kings, right? So I have a kiosk, I have two kiosks in the mall. So we'll ask people to come check out our brand. Y'all know the little kiosk in the mall? You know, you try to act like you don't see us. Yeah, you try to act like you don't see us. Yeah, try to act like you don't see us. Yeah, like you yeah, but that's me, right? We do that. Um, so you don't have a store, that's what you have? Yeah, I don't. Hey, why are you doing me like that? Oh, yeah, <laughs> you have to yes. somewhere. I'm yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, but we're, we're actually about to open a store in South of Cat Mall. Um, okay. April 11th or 18th, just depending on, don't tell nobody, I ain't tell nobody, because it's not funny. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I, I have a shirt called Work Like Slaves, Eat Like Kings, so my goal is, when they come to the kiosk, I have to show them them in the shirt. Not just because they like it, but I have to show them um, how this is you. Like I, so I say, yo, we got the shirt that says, um, no days off, no nights, no weekends, no holidays. I think everybody, I ask them what they do, they might say, you know, I work at you know, Walmart, I work a job or something like that. Everybody has a job and a dream, and the hardest thing is building that bridge between your job and your dream. How do you get there? So I tell them, like, listen, the, the no days off, this one helped me get out of my job. Like, I work on my job, and every day when I got off my job, I work on my clothing brand. Every single day. I don't care if it was my birthday. I don't care if it was Christmas. I was trying to get away from that job, but it took no days off. I, I really had to work hard. And every so often, they'll say, you know what? Yeah, I do that. Like, I, I'm, I'm trying to get into music. After I get off work, I take my money from my check, and I'll buy a microphone or something like that. And every day I do music. Every day I'm writing. So they identify to that no days off shirt. Not because it's the shirt that I made and I'm trying to sell it to them. But they see themselves in that shirt. They wear it because it identifies them. It's picture painting. Picture painting. What's your business model? Like how did how did you set up everything? Like how, how did you organize <coughs> employees and where your stores are? How cash flows? <laughs> Woo! Um, like if you put it, if you could put it in like three sentences. I can't. I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I, I dropped out. I dropped out of college. I'm not, um, I'm not organized. It's, I think that is probably the single most um, enemy to success in people because they're, they're trying to figure out how to put the business model together, how to find the plan, you gotta find your staff, you gotta put your people together. But sometimes if you keep walking, you'll figure certain things out and you'll pick up like nuggets along the way. Like, um, some people are looking for a pot of gold, right? It, it's just a pot with a whole bunch of gold in it. But I just walk around and pick up gold everywhere I go. I just pick it up. And once I find an empty pot, I put it all in. Example, I didn't have a strategy for, um, you know, these wristbands. I just figure out how to just buy these wristbands. I like them. I'll sell them to people. So as that started to, grow, started to grow, I said, you know what? I'll just make a shirt. So I made a shirt. It was whack, people really wasn't feeling it. But I started to ask people what don't they like about it and they started to tell me. So we made another shirt and it started to sell. And the other shirt that we started to sell was just the logo because they liked the name, Sleep is for Suckers. It was this logo on the front of all kind of shirts. So I started to make, I made probably like 40 different colorways in the same shirt, same design. And people started to like it. But it became a problem with all these different colorways because I might sell out at a medium in this particular color and everybody wants a medium in that one, but I got all these other ones and they don't want it. So I figured, yo, people got too many options. If I just had this color, they'd buy that one. So I narrowed it down. So, so it's, it's like, as you keep walking, you'll pick up different strategies. Like I didn't have that, right? And my, 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 my mentor, he hates it. Like they're not a planner. And I just go out there, because he's an MBA, he's the CFO for, uh, for Diddy Enterprises, all Diddy, Diddy's enterprises, like Ciroc, he's the CFO of everything. 
and he hates that I don't come up with like plans and strategies and I just run out there and bump my head and learn to walk. Like babies fall down and they get up and then they fall down and they get up and they fall down and get up and that's how they learn how to walk. It's not like, you know, all right, I'm gonna put my left foot here. If I do it this way, <laughs> you just gotta keep walking and fall down. So, did I answer your question? Not really? Yeah. I don't have a plan. I don't have a strategy. I just keep working. The, 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 all right, here's the thing. I got, I got a good one for you. Not, and nobody knows this. I have, I have two kiosks. Nobody but my staff knows this. I have two kiosks in Cumberland Mall. One's downstairs and one's upstairs. So we had a kiosk downstairs and we were doing really well. So in that mall, I said, you know what? We're about to start making, um, this dude showed me this uh, sublimation thing. Um, where we can make custom coffee mugs and custom shot glasses. So anything you want on it, we can make it a custom shot glass, custom coffee mugs, and custom water bottles. So I was like, you know what? I think that'd do really good in the mall. That's a good idea, right? Mm -hmm. So I opened another kiosk. Two, another $2,000 a month. For some reason, people were not buying these shot glasses and these coffee mugs. <laughs> They just weren't buying them. And I'm spending all this time in this second business because I think I got this other kiosk cranking in the mall. And I'm thinking people are going to know me anyway so they'll buy from me. I was losing money. I said, you know what? I'm going to go back to doing what I do best. We're going to start selling these clothes. So we got two sleepers for Circus Kiosk. I took all the coffee mugs and all that and started putting shirts and stuff on the second kiosk. And people started to buy it because that's where I was focusing my energy. So, you know, when people go upstairs, they see the kiosk, they might not buy anything, but when they go downstairs, they're like, yo, I just see this. You know, I'm gonna buy something now. So they both work together. And people are like, yo, you're a genius. You got two kiosks in the same mall? I'd have never done that. Well, the first one didn't work. So, but now, now it looks like a plan, like, all right, you got two kiosks. So you get traffic, you, you, you get somebody to buy your clothes, any interest that they come in, huh? Yeah. I was losing money on the first one, so I just put the shirts on it.